So I sort of jokingly titled this, uh, it's 11 o'clock, do you know what your code is doing? To follow the, it's at 10 o'clock uh, one we just heard earlier. Another way to think about some of the ideas that I want to talk to you today could be titled the application aware infrastructure. Well, I've been thinking about lately, what does it mean to have the distinction between applications and infrastructure, especially when we've been told by our cloud providers that if the clicker is going to work, there you go, if you want to run your apps on their cloud, right, which we all want to do to some degree, then the result is your applications become a function of their cloud. Now, the more I begin to think about this, and I used to work at Amazon Web Services before I joined Riverbed, so I'm very comfortable with telling people, hey, you have to write your applications the way they work on our cloud. But I've begun to wonder, is that actually maybe the backwards way of thinking about this? And instead, as we move infrastructure into code, and then with some really recent things, moving the network itself into code as well, I want to flip this around. And I want to start talking about the infrastructure being a function of the applications instead. So a lot more responsibility onto the developers now when you think about this, because developers have to start considering some of the things they haven't had to think of before. If we were to move in this direction, what might some of the requirements be in order to accomplish this? You can boil it down to the notion of abstractions everywhere. Some people get a little nervous about this, but in reality, it makes it a lot easier because at all, all of the layers of abstractions, you can make changes at one layer without having to worry about what's happening in adjacent or distant layers. And I started to think, well, where do we have some layers that might make sense for abstractions? And in some of these layers, we've already got a pretty decent set, or we're beginning to develop a pretty good set of abstractions. Where we don't have one just yet is kind of at the transport. And you know, coming from a networking company, I got to throw something in here about software-defined networking, right? I worry about this because I think this is the next thing that's going to be filled with washing, like we had cloud washing. We're now going to have a bunch of SDN washing. Let me maybe inoculate you against that a little bit. Think of SDN as nothing more than a transport abstraction that separates the decision about where to put stuff away from the grunt work of actually doing that. So maybe we can finally now get the complete set of abstractions that we need to start thinking about the infrastructure becoming a function of the application. Some examples of this might include the ability to intercept a DNS query, check that against some reputation database, re-inject the query if it's good or drop it if it's bad. But we want to do this as close as possible to the nodes that are performing the DNS query, not backhaul that all the way to some central location. Another example might be your universal communicator, whatever it happens to be, needs to do, it needs to switch from voice to video. And to do that effectively, we need a dynamic replumbing of the QoS in place right now. But that's controlled by the application, not by something in the infrastructure itself. You might also think about customizing the performance of an application based on who is using it or based on the tenant it's located next to. And this also means that you might be altering the resource use on demand, again, controlled by the application. So what we have is, is what used to exist as a set of discrete middle boxes are now becoming application features. The applications themselves provision global server load balancing, perhaps WAN optimization, a web application firewall, or maybe even some mechanism to capture packets for later analysis or on-demand analysis. And the beauty here is that since the developers are writing this into the applications themselves, the infrastructure being a function of the application takes care of placing or replacing these servers as necessary, and it happens automatically. Where could you do this? You could do this in a network controller if you wanted to. 
If you don't have an infrastructure that looks like an SDN, perhaps you could do this with some other kind of code running in your top of rack switch. The outcomes of this is true decoupling and delegation. We have very effective, independent isolation here now. And the beauty is it can be ephemeral. When you're not using it anymore, you switch it off. And by side effect, you no longer pay for it now. We want to move these infrastructure functions so that they are at or in or as near as possible to the applications and data. By doing that, we can apply the policy as soon as we see the datagram, as soon as the packet arrives, instead of having to haul that thing far away to some central location. We have centralized policy control, but decentralized decision making now. So perhaps location doesn't really matter. Or perhaps location is transformed from a constraint into a feature. Location becomes the thing you choose. This is a time-sensitive workload. I'm going to place it in something I know that's expensive, but I need it done quickly. This is a cost-sensitive workload. I'll place it someplace where it's always going to be the cheapest. I don't care when it's done. Think about scale now being measured in density and not just up or wide. This kind of scale gives you an increase in flexibility that you might not have thought about before. We have a greater number of insertion points. This greater number of insertion points creates more opportunities for visibility and control. And by that, we can get what I call a just-in-time infrastructure. So thank you very much. Appreciate your time.